Hello everyone, once again I welcome you all to MSP lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy and today let me discuss again on 31p NMR spectroscopy. In my previous lecture, I gave you very good examples of uh, identifying different isomers of square planar complex and also a square pyramidal complex and also how to distinguish if the coordination number is 5 uh, for a D8 system, two possibilities are there. Uh, in having an appropriate geometry that is square pyramid geometry and trigonal bipyramid geometry and how this geometrical changes can happen with temperature we saw in case of uh, rhodium complex having tetrakis trimethyl phosphine uh, methyl uh, composition in its coordination sphere. So, let me continue with more interesting examples in this lecture. So, now I have given another interesting uh, molecule here. Let us try to analyze the spectra given. This spectrum is of 195 platinum NMR. In this spectrum, if you see, we have two triplets of equal intensity. Then if you look into the structure here, we have platinum. Platinum is directly attached to N15. That means here, enriched molecule with N15. And we have another molecule here, isocyanate, where we have carbon to nitrogen triple bond is there and we have CH2s are there and it seems hydrogen is not interfering in this NMR, 195 platinum NMR. So, let us try to analyze and first thing we should look into is this is enriched with 15 and 15 uh, N we know that I equals half if it is interacting with platinum which is one bond apart it should split the platinum signal into a doublet. And this should be 1J platinum 15N coupling. This will split into a doublet. Now, we have each line is split into triplet of equal intensity. And here, if triplet of equal intensity means we should think of nuclear spin value something else. And of course, the in close vicinity, we have 13C carbon here. Carbon does not split something like this here because 13 C has I equals half and also its abundance is only 1 percent. There is a possibility of seeing satellites, but on the other hand here we have 14 N and 14 N we know that uh, for 14 N I equals 1. Now, if it is splitting this one, we can use 2 N I plus 1 rule, 2 only 1 14 nitrogen is there and then its spin is 1 plus 1, so it will be 3 peaks. We have 3 peaks and when I equals 1 and triplet is there intensities are 1 is to 1 is to 1. So, in this case, it should split something like this. Unlike uh, the splitting with uh, nucleus with I equals half where intensity will be 1 is to 2 is to 1, here it is 1 is to 1 is to 1, 1 is to 1 is to 1 and then if you assume this is 2J, this is 2J. Uh, platinum N coupling, then it should appear something like this. We can correlate this one, this is 1J PT N 15 and then if you take any of this separation, this is 2, 2J PT 14 N. So, this is how although it appears complicated, when you understand it becomes very easy. So, this is 195 platinum NMR, this involves both 1J platinum 15N coupling as well as two bonds platinum 14N coupling. Normally, we do not see 14N coupling and in case if we get something like this, interpretation would be rather easy. So, this is a typical 195 platinum NMR spectrum and again when we look into 195 platinum, here it is very similar to carrying out 13 C NMR measurement. Now, I have given set of chemical shifts or spectra here and then write the appropriate structures and match the corresponding 31 p NMR spectrum for the following inorganic cages and explain. So, that means four spectra are given and I would be providing four 
molecules here, form molecules. Then we have to interpret and we have to identify which uh, molecule has which spectrum here. Then if you look into P4, it is a tetrahedral molecule with P4 having each one having three bonds connected to each other. And now this is all the phosphorus atoms are identical, they are chemical and magnetic equivalent. As a result, one should expect a single resonance in, in its 31 PNMR spectrum. So here, one of that one, it could be this one. If I say one here, it can be this one or it can be this one here. Come back to that one. And now let us look into this molecule. And when we react P4 with excess of oxygen, and we can get P4O10. In the same way, if we react white phosphorus with sulfur, excess of sulfur, we can get the analogous uh, sulfide compound that is P4S10. And here, all phosphorus atoms are pentavalent and tetra coordinated, having one phosphorus to sulfur double bond and three phosphorus to sulfur single bonds. As a result, all of them are chemically and magnetically equivalent uh, and molecule is very symmetric. As a result, we also expect for this one to show one peak here. So, it could be this one or this one. And next, let us look into this molecule here. In this molecule, uh, two phosphorus are in pentavalent state and two phosphorus are trivalent state. That means, we have two different type of phosphorus atoms are there, we have here. And then, these two are identical and these two are identical. So, these two phosphorus are equidistant from trivalent phosphorus here, trivalent phosphorus. That means, these two phosphorus can be coupled with trivalent phosphorus to give a triplet and similarly, pentavalent phosphorus also can couple with two trivalent phosphorus to give a triplet. That means, the spectrum should have two triplets and yes, this is two triplets and this can be corresponding to this molecule here. Now, if you look into fourth molecule here, in case of fourth molecule, one of the four phosphorus atoms has three PS bonds. So, others they keep PP bonds intact. Just by looking into the molecule, you should be able to tell that we have two different type of phosphorus atoms in a ratio 1 is to 3. And this is one type, if, if I say this is A and this are all B. Or if I say uh, A, this can be X. I think it is appropriate to give use letters from farthest because one is very different from the rest of three. So, if I put A here, uh, there should be X here. That means, we are talking about AX3 spin system. In AX3 spin system, A will be coupled with 3X to give a quadrate. Delta A, if you look into it, it would be something like this quadrate. And if we look into delta X, so this will be a doublet. So, these three are identical, they split with A to give a doublet and then A will be split by 3x to give a quadrant. So, we have here, okay. so this is for 4. Okay. So, that means basically when we take white phosphorus and react with excess of sulfur and it is likely that if we abruptly stop this reaction, it is likely that we can get all these products along with unreacted white phosphorus also in that case without any problem we should be able to distinguish. Then how to distinguish between this one and this one? For that one we have to take the spectrum of pure white phosphorus then we should be able to identify or we do excess of reaction for this isolated molecule you take and then we should be able to distinguish between this one and this one. So, this is how when we get more than one type of product in a reaction mixture and if we have phosphorus in it, it is very easy to distinguish these and identify the corresponding products. So, here that is the explanation I have given here. This one you can call it as A2 X2 spin system and this is A X3 spin system. Now, let us look into the NMR spectrum of PF5, both 31 P NMR and 19 F NMR. PF5, we all know that it is highly flexional molecule and it is trigonal bipyramidal. And because of flexionality, what happens? We may not be able to distinguish axial fluorine with equatorial ones. So, at room temperature, if you record 31 P NMR. 
So all are identical as I said, we cannot distinguish between equatorial and axial ones. As a result, all the five would be coupled with uh, phosphorus to give a five or their sextet. It should give uh, so six lines will be there and it should appear something like this. Here this is 31P NMR spectrum. Now, if you look into fluorine NMR, fluorine NMR again you cannot distinguish between axial and equatorial as a result you will see a single resonance for all the fluorine atoms but that is coupled with phosphorus so it appears as a simple doublet something like this, something like this. Okay. But if the molecule is static what would happen? Okay, next question is if the molecule is static then let us look into 19F spectrum. If the molecule is static, then this is axial and this is equatorial. So, let us say then there are two possibilities. First, it can interact with the axial ones or it can also interact with equatorial ones. That means, unless we know the magnitude of the coupling constant of phosphorus with equatorial fluorine and axial fluorine, we may not be able to tell it. But on the other hand, if the molecule is frozen, say let us say minus 80 degree centigrade, when we take it, we assume that all dynamic process comes to an halt and it is static, so that there is no uh, berry pseudo rotation to exchange axial ones with equatorial one. In that case, if you take record the spectrum, we should be able to tell simply by looking into the spectral pattern whether the fluorine to phosphorus axial is larger in magnitude or phosphorus to equatorial fluorine coupling is maximum. So, let us look into both the cases here. First, let us assume 1J P F axial is greater than 1J P F equatorial. So, now first what would happen is the phosphorus signal will be split into a triplet here and then each line will be split into a quadrant. So, something like this. That means, it is basically a triplet of quadrants we will see, a triplet of quadrants we will see. On the other hand, if we see P f equatorial is greater than 1 j P f axial, first they split this into a quadrant. and then each one will be split into a triplet here because of two axial ones. And this one is J P F E and now each one will be split into triplet. Okay, so, this coupling will be here axial. In this case, it appears like something like this. So, now by simply looking into the spectrum, we should be able to tell whether magnitude of phosphorus to fluorine axial one is larger or phosphorus to fluorine equatorial is larger. So, these two, this one will be something like this. This is a triplet. Something like this it shows. Of course, here it is 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 is maintained and overall it is 1 is to 2 is to 1 is maintained. So, this is how we can sketch an MR spectrum of looking into the coupling tree. We call this as coupling tree. Now, I have three more examples here. Sketch the 19F NMR spectrum of P5 that I have already done. Sketch the respective NMR spectrum for the following compound showing all reasonable couplings here. So, let us take one at a time and again if you look into first molecule here, we have a square planar complex and in this one again we have two isotopes are there 196 platinum with I equals 0 that is 66 percent and then 195 platinum I equals half with 34 percent 
abundance. And now we have one phosphorus that is directly connected to phosphorus and then we have phosphine imine. We have another phosphorus this pentavalent and this if you say this one A, this is X and also this is M. So, we are talking about AMX spin system. AMX spin system differs little bit in the sense M is not 100 percent abundant. Whereas, in this case we can see very identical, but instead of phenyl groups on phosphorus we have fluorine are there and another NMR active nuclei and here we have P double bond S. Yes. That means basically you, we can talk this is one type, this is another type and this is another type and this is another type. So, that means we have in case of 31 P NMR we can anticipate two signals and each signal will be split in a different way. And then if you just look into this case, uh, it is very interesting and if you just look into 14 NNMR, let us say 14 NNMR, uh, what would happen is hydrogen is also one bond apart and phosphorus is also one bond apart. In this case, we have to see different situation here. So, one is nitrogen to hydrogen coupling is larger than nitrogen to phosphorus coupling. On the other hand, uh, nitrogen to phosphorus coupling is larger than nitrogen to hydrogen coupling and the third one is both the couplings are identical. That means, if somebody asks you to sketch the 14 N NMR spectrum of this molecule without knowing the difference in the magnitude of these couplings, we should be able to sketch all three possible ones and after plotting or recording actual NMR spectrum, we can compare and we can conclude what actually it is. So, let us take one at a time. Now, let us look into 195 platinum NMR spectrum of this molecule here. First, this platinum is coupled with phosphorus, this one bond apart to give a doublet and each line in the doublet will be further split into another doublet because of 2J platinum to phosphorus coupling here. So, that is shown here and this corresponds to 2J platinum phosphorus coupling and this corresponds to 1J platinum phosphorus coupling. So, it shows a doublet of doublet. Now, I would come back to phosphorus NMR. Now, let us look into this molecule here. Here a PP bonded compound with one of the phosphorus is oxidized with selenium. <coughs> so, selenium again yeah, 77 selenium is about 0.6 percent I think 7.6 percent uh, natural abundance is there and I equals half rest is 76 selenium which is NMR inactive. But when you are looking to 77 selenium NMR, first this will be coupled with doubly bound with so one bond phosphorus and this coupling comes anywhere between 780 to 1200 hertz. First it splits by this one and then uh, we have two bond coupling also that will split each line into another doublet and this coupling magnitude is much lower. It can be anywhere between up to 50 hertz or 100 hertz. So, you can see it also appears as a doublet of doublet. And then if you look into platinum compound here, phosphorus NMR, let us look into the phosphorus NMR here. 31 p NMR. So, in 31 p NMR, if we just look into 66 percent NMR inactive molecules, platinum inactive I equals 0 molecules, what we get is we get a doublet here and a doublet here. This is simply 2 J PP coupling, 1 2 J PP coupling and this is 2 J PP coupling. So, let us say this is PO and then this is PN, something like this we can denote. And now what happens, this accounts for 66 percent of molecules, out of 100 molecules 66 have uh, 196, this corresponds to 196 platinum bound. But how about uh, 195 platinum bound, they will be split further, so something like this, a doublet and then doublet something like this. Now, now this coupling and this, this coupling, so this is for the PO, uh, 1J, PT, PO coupling and this is 1J. PT, PN coupling. So, this can be anywhere between 2500 to it can go to as high as 7000 hertz. So, we should be able to again draw 31 PNMR or sketch 31 PNMR spectrum for this molecule here. And if we sketch phosphorus NMR here for this one, again both are uh, different uh, AX spin system. We can get something like this. And now, this selenium is also there. So, what happens the one that is say if it is selenium bound and this is a bit lone pair, this one will be split and it will be splitting something like this and then we will be having satellites here and then this coupling what we call it as 1J PSC coupling here. 
and whereas this one it is less likely to show even if it shows the coupling magnitude is very small let us say if it is there it will be something like this it will be there and then in this case it is 2j psc coupling so once we know the relationship and how what is the natural abundance uh, we should be able to catch appropriate nmr spectrum no matter which nuclei we are talking about so let me stop here and come up with a few more interesting molecules in my next lecture so i showed you here a rhodium compound let me discuss nmr spectrum of that rhodium compound in my next lecture until then have an excellent time thank you